Right, hopefully we are back live. Uh, we had problems like this last year where it cut out and went back a few times, but you just need to stick with it. You need to just carry on, go through. Hopefully there's not too much downtime in between it and we can still carry on. We've only got a little bit to finish off as well. I was just at the point where I was talking about this experiment. So once you've got your results for current and voltage and you've plotted those for the different components, you've plotted a different graph for each one, uh, you'd see a pattern that looked like this. And they can ask you questions about these graphs directly. So this one is for your standard resistor, um, directly proportional as you increase the voltage uh, or the current, they, they, the other one goes up as well in a straight line. If the resistance was, was higher, if it was a higher resistance uh, in the resistor, the line would be shallower. So higher resistance means a shallower line, whereas lower resistance means a steeper line. And that can be important for things like LDRs, which are light dependent resistors, or thermistors, which are resistors which change their temperature, uh, change their resistance based on temperature. This is the graph that what it would look like for a filament light bulb. A filament light bulb is one of the ones with the thin wire that goes through it. Um, it in the middle it looks the same, it's a straight line, but it curves off at either end. And that's because as uh, the voltage increases, um, the resistance of the wire increases, it gives out light, uh, radiation, and uh, the, the line levels up. Uh, at the end. And this is the graph for a diode. The reason this is for a diode is because diodes only allow electricity to flow in one direction through. So uh, when they're negative, uh, when the potential difference is negative, then no current can flow. It will not flow through the diode in the incorrect direction. But once it goes to the positive, it doesn't increase initially and then all of a sudden it shoots up as it allows the current to flow through. Now, if that was a light emitted diode or an LED, that would give out light when the current increased at that point. Uh, but this is the, these are the three graphs, the VI or IV graphs for uh, an ohmic resistor, a filament light bulb, and a diode. Right, just going to blast through a few little bits uh, as we come close to the end. The National Grid, National Grid is a series of pylons and cables which supply electricity to uh, all the homes in the, in the country. Um, the key bits about this are, it's a very high voltage that travels through those cables um, of alternating current, and that's to reduce energy wastage, because energy is lost through those wires. So they, they pump it up to a really high voltage, so less energy is lost in that transfer. Key bits are the, the step-up transformer. So when the power station generates the electricity, it's at a relatively high voltage, now, don't need to know the exact amount, but let's say around 2,000 volts. And they use a step-up transformer to massively increase that voltage up to 132,000 volts, or somewhere in that region. It then passes along through those cables, which are suspended high up in the air to prevent the danger of electrocution. Now, they can be buried underground, but that can be costly, and if they need maintenance, it's a, it's a hassle to find where the fault is. And then they go down into a step-down transformer, which lowers the voltage back down to a nice 230 uh, volts for your homes and your appliances. So it doesn't blow up your appliances, and it also doesn't uh, cause you... Well, it could still kill you if uh, you were to touch 230 volts, but it's less damaging than uh, 132,000, certainly. The point of that is to reduce the amount of energy lost in that transfer. That's why you step it up to a high voltage, and bring it back down to make it safe again afterwards. On to the final sort of bits, if you like. So discovery of atomic structure and atomic structure itself, that's actually in both the chemistry and the physics. I talked about isotopes in the chemistry video, so hopefully you watched that, because they can ask you about isotopes. Isotopes are relevant with the same number of protons, different number of neutrons. Um, discovery of the different models, so the plum pudding model, the nuclear model, Rutherford's experiment comes up a bit more in this, so the gold scattering or alpha scattering experiment through gold leaf. Uh, this is what it looked like. Particles, when they try to, uh, they should hit the atom, actually pass through, and some were scattered uh, in different directions when they hit the nucleus in the centre of the atom. Um, that was his experiment. Changed our model from the plum pudding model to the nuclear model of the atom. The three types of radiation, again, there's probably too much on here that, for you to read uh, easily on your screens at home. 
Uh, but this table summarises the difference in alpha, beta and gamma. What they are, what their penetrating power is, that means what they can pass through or what they're stopped by, uh, how far they travel through air, uh, what they actually are themselves, their charge, and whether they are damaging or ionising if they hit you. So that information is summarised on that table. Again, if you wish to freeze it on the video and get that information down, if you can see it, then do it at this point. Uh, when you watch it again. Um, otherwise, uh, like I say, you can get this PowerPoint as well and see these slides. I'm not going to talk about nuclear reactions. They were talked about in the full video, um, but uh, alpha and beta decay, you need to know the nuclear reactions that are involved in that and the equations. Uh, but I did want to just finish off by talking about two things. So half-life, just briefly. Half-life means two things. It's the amount of time it takes for the number of nuclei to actually break down by half, or by the count, the radioactive count, to drop by half. And common questions involve a graph such as this, you may have to plot it and then work out the half-life. And the way you do that is if you look at the count at the start, which is 80, work out what half of 80 is, 40, draw a line across from 40 and down, this is in days, so that's two days. Now I could just say the half-life is two days, and I wouldn't be wrong, but I would lose a mark if I didn't then check it by saying what's half of 40, 20, go along, down four days. So another two days has gone by, and again, what's half of 20, 10, go along, down six days. So it's going up in twos each time, so I've confirmed the half-life is two days. Or they can give you... I also had the reason. Hopefully we're back up. Uh, we'll just confirm again. Keeps dropping out, I can only apologise for that. Uh, it does seem to have problems sometimes, which Walker records is with the physics. The physics is just too much for it, uh, so it doesn't, doesn't handle it very well. Uh, just seeing if we're back on before I launch into this one again. So hopefully, we're not sure though, it's not coming up on our screens as of yet. Because uh, clearly I have to have the screens in the background so I can watch myself uh, on a screen while I'm doing the live feed because I'm that vain. So. <laughs> Did it go up and it go down again? Seeing if we're live again. Yep, looks like it. Should be on again. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, it does seem to be with these physics one, it does drop in and out, but you just need to stick with it, as I said earlier. Um, Hopefully, I've got up to this point where I was talking about where you can do this with the numbers. So you can do a calculation based on uh, the numbers rather than from a graph. You saw the graph 80 to 40 to 20 to 10. Work out how much time has passed each time. With the numbers, so we're talking about this question where there's a sample of 100 grams of protium 223 and the half-life is 20 minutes. Um, if we need to work out how much, how much time has passed, uh, where, the, where the amount of protium has dropped to 12.5 grams, we look at one half-life. One half-life takes us down from 100 to 50. So that's 20 minutes has passed for that decay to happen. But then it drops by another half. Now that means it goes down to 25 grams. And a second half-life has passed. So I'm going to add the time up. So we add another 20, and we've gone to 40 minutes has passed. And half of 25 uh, means a third half-life has passed to get to 12.5 grams. And that means 60 minutes has passed. I'm adding on a half-life each time uh, for us to drop down to 12.5 grams. So the answer, that sample, is 60 minutes old because the amount of francium has dropped from 100. It's gone through three half-lives. Three times 20 gives us 60 minutes okay, for using numbers. And the last bit I wanted to talk about, because it didn't come up last year, but it's, it's a small part, and I don't imagine it would be huge if a question did come up on, on this, but it's worth noting. There is a difference between irradiation and contamination. People think if a sample or substance has been irradiated, it must be dangerous. Now, that's not true. A lot of the things you come across have been irradiated. Um, 
they irradiate strawberries, they irradiate medical equipment, and the reason they do that is to kill uh, microbes or pathogens that may be uh, harmful to us that are growing on these things. Irradiation requires them to expose the object to a source of radiation. So they expose it to a source of radiation, usually gamma radiation. It doesn't cause the object to become radioactive in any way. Um, and it stops as soon as that source is removed. So as soon as you stop irradiating it, so turn off the radiation source, it then stops, it's not radioactive. Whereas contamination is different. If something's contaminated with radioactive material, it means it's, it's got tiny particles of radioactive material on it. Now that continues to be radioactive after the contaminant has been taken away. And so therefore is very harmful. And it can be difficult to contain that contamination, and it can cause harm to people. So the difference between the radiation, the radiation is hitting something with radiation to kill pathogens on it, and it doesn't stay radioactive after the, the irradiation is finished. Whereas contamination means it gets covered in radioactive particles, and they stay on it, and they're very hard to remove after the radiation source has been taken away. So they are different. Contamination is bad, irradiation is used to sterilise things. And just to prevent your risk, the risk you are at from radioactive sources, these are some measures that can be taken. The number of times if a question comes up on what safety precautions should be taken when working with radioactive sources, and students immediately go goggles. Okay? Goggles won't do anything with a radioactive source. Okay? You don't particularly want it in your eye for contamination, but they're not, they're not the answer that, that it's going to be looking for. Okay. The sort of things you need to talk about are uh, radiation protection suits or protective suits. Um, you can store the radioactive sources in a special lead-lined box. You should minimise the length of time you are exposed to a radioactive source for. You should handle the radioactive sources with tongs or some sort of device. And you can also, if you're working with radioactive sources, wear these radiation badges which show if you've been exposed to too much radiation and then you need to... Right, hopefully we're back. I mean, I am right at the end now, so like I say, we have got to the final bit. And yeah. uh, the last bit I was just going to show you after talking about irradiation and contamination is uh, the different equations. So for energy, you've got all these equations. These are, this is not the equation sheet. These are the equations that could come up. So you need to learn certain ones of them. Uh, and a few of them are given, like elastic energy uh, and changing thermal energy using specific heat capacity. Um, you've got these equations for electricity you need to know and be able to use. And you've got these equations uh, for the particle model of matter, which I haven't gone into too much today, talking about latent heat, um, density, things such as that. Density was the six mark required practical question last year. Now, that's not to say it shouldn't come up, and you may need to know the formula for, you, for working it out, but it's unlikely to be the, the big question, the big practical question. Okay. So, that's a uh, particle model of matter. There's not an equations or equations for the atomic uh, radiation uh, unit. And you've got these for electricity, and you've got these for energy. Quite a lot there. So again, if you want to get those down, you could pause the video if you're watching it, or I don't know, the fifth or sixth video, I guess, at this point, um, and take these down from that if you haven't got access to the PowerPoint. Uh, like I say, apologies for the technical difficulties. We will work hard to sort them out uh, for the future videos, so it doesn't take um, as long. It's taken about an hour to do what should have hopefully have only taken about half an hour to 40 minutes, but we are there, and well done for sticking with it. Um, I have been told to shout out again a few people, so just to check they've watched all the way for all the little gaps, all the little stops. I'm supposed to shout out, I believe he called himself Folkestone's Most Wanted, but I think that's a, a gross exaggeration from Cam Brown. Uh, Nirav uh, told me to shout him out, um, but if he keeps poking me in the chest around here, he'll be in trouble, um, because he's trying to make me look down. And uh, Chloe... Chloe H today said she wanted to shout out in, uh, and she came to science intervention after school, so well done to her. So hopefully it's been helpful, hopefully you've stuck with it. Do watch the full video, hour and a half after this. Um, we will be coming in tomorrow to do some stuff in the yellow chair as always, and hopefully we'll be coming into your lessons as well. And we do have some science lessons tomorrow uh, before the actual exams, so we will be supporting you all the way up to that 1.30 
uh, brief it in the theatre and good luck.